Howdy, good morning, and welcome to Red Sea Roundup. Today is Wednesday, April 17th. I am here in our new studio with Deacon Robin Waters. Good morning, Robin. How good. are you? I'm great, Judy. It's great to be down here in the College Station area and, and to sit here with you and do the first live broadcast out of the new studio. We're not quite in our new... Uh, uh, we're still using our old equipment, so we're not quite where we're going to be, but it's pretty cool to be here. Watch out. Here we yeah, go. We're not in the new new studio yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. New temporary <laughs> and, and studio. And that other voice is Caleb Browner. Bronner, how do you say it? Bronner. 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 Yeah. How's it going, Caleb? It's going great, Judy. I know. Besides being tired. Oh yeah, Dennis and I are real tired. We've been moving like crazy, and um, but things are good. We're things are looking up. This Absolutely. The Dennis he, and Caleb Hauling Company, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Moving company. Please no. Dennis <laughs> greeted me at the door, and I was like, I realize now I had no idea where this really was. I was <laughs> Put it in my GPS, but I wasn't following it. And I was like, oh, no, it's not on 2818. Keep going. Turn around. Go okay. back. <laughs> Had you not been here before? I've never been here yet. Okay. So, but we're here today. Yeah, awesome. Uh, let's continue to say Happy Easter, everyone, right? Absolutely. We're in the Easter season. All the way through uh, Pentecost. The last uh, time you and I talked on the air, uh, it was the couple of days after Easter, we were still riding high. We were looking forward to the eclipse, and right. I possibly we'll talk a little bit about that as yeah. well. But uh, you mentioned the shift of gears, right? You know, Lent, the season of Lent, and now we're Easter, and just kind of got our conversation started with uh, how to keep. Go. I read a little quote: "Go from fasting to feasting." Hey, I like that. I do too. Yeah. And we talked about <clears throat> some of our practices that we incorporated in Lent and some of this Regan familiar to you? Well, you know, the thing about about what you're talking about is, is something that I've, uh, it was a long time ago, I was involved in, in an organization and, and a lot of times they would say, uh, anything you can do for 30 to 40 days, you can do for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what we were talking about that day is, that, hey, if we can pick up these practices that help us grow closer to the Lord and we can do them, do them well for uh, 30 to 40 days, why couldn't we continue to them and help us to continually grow closer to the Lord, no matter what it is? Exactly. I think um, it's why we need to work on our faith life all day, every day. Not, I think a lot of times, uh, for instance, two years ago when um, the Catechism in a Year came out, I thought, oh, you know, I can do that. It's a little bit, a little bit of day. I like him. Yep. Let's listen. And I did it about three days, and I realized I was already behind. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I didn't like that. And it was almost as if God said, you didn't even ask me if you wanted me to, if I wanted you to do that or not. So yep. just jumping on, picking up practices, sometimes they work, and some it's just not your time. Well, one thing uh, that you, you reminded me of, Judy, when you said that, <laughs> is uh, so this morning um, – uh, I was uh, I was preaching at St. Mary's Church the Assumption in West. It was Wednesday is Deacon's Day. Mm -hmm. This happened to be my Wednesday. Next Wednesday is, Wednesday will be uh, Deacon uh, Ronnie Sakura. And so uh, anyway, one of the things that I kind of closed out with that uh, was just what you said is that we really we need to finally d really discern what the Lord is calling us to and be willing to say no as as a, the wife of a deacon. <laughs> you know that probably you and Keith, Dick and Keith, probably both have an issue saying no when you're asked to do some type of a spiritual practice. Well, <clears throat> I think we fooled ourselves for so long thinking serving God was just wearing yourself out. Yeah, doing you know, stuff. You've got to do this and do that. Right. And fortunately, a lot of it was stuff I really love doing. Right. And I think we're just in a different season now. Sure. But... uh there's nothing wrong with saying no, because sometimes when you say yes to too many things, you do them all bad instead of a few good. Well, you know? saying no to one thing, the uh, Matthew Kellyism, you're actually saying yes to something, to something better, else, bigger and better. And um, so some of our conversation uh, over the next 40 minutes or so is going to be about how we can incorporate some of the things we may have done during Lent yeah. and celebrate Easter and keep this rhythm of the the church helps us celebrate if Absolutely. we pay attention. If we're paying attention. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, one of the ways that the church helps us is because we have a liturgical calendar. Absolutely. And uh, 
some of the information on the liturgical calendar is on holy calendars that most churches give out right. during if, the new year. If you're Catholic, <laughs> you're, uh, your, your church gives out a calendar, and it is so handy to make sure that you know what's going on the, in, the, in the liturgical world and the liturgical calendar, the different feast days, even even down to what color the, your uh, the vestments your priests yeah. are wearing that day. You know, I'll probably have used the uh, Laudete app for 10 years, and one day it hit me because it would have the color mm-hmm. of the <clears throat> The liturgy that day, whether you know if it was red, it was right. <laughs> what all those things mean, and um, how we I'm 66 years old and have been practicing this Catholicism <laughs> for a while <laughs> for quite a long time. Yeah. And um, uh, so I want to make a quick mention of your um uh, lessons on Eucharist 101 mm-hmm. that y'all did. We are utilizing those in our Bible study over at St. Anthony's, and how much we're all getting out of it. Well, good. And if our listeners have not utilized that, boy, I can't recommend it any more than I am right now because it's we need those reminders. Yep. yep. We need to, you know, constantly throughout every Mass that I go to, I try to have a little pinpoint reminder that brings me back to what's really going on. Right. Not the kids sitting behind me or, or whatever. Right. Because the evil one would love for you to be distracted. <laughs> and, you know, if someone wants to do that, they can just go to our website, redsearadio.org, and there's a link there that you can click on and sign up, and you'll be sent an episode a week. Or kind of the kind of the cheater way to do it, which is uh, which you can do that too, go to YouTube, go to our YouTube channel, and the whole series is right there. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, I think it's a pretty good series. Uh, you know, as a person that was on there, you know, I told Caleb and Evan, Evan, our uh, our marketing guy, who has uh, our, our listeners may know, has moved on to, to other things. Uh, you know, I said, "How come y'all make Evan look so good and me look so old and <laughs> old and cr- you know bad?" <laughs> but uh, I think it's the lighting that uh, Caleb's got to work on. That uh, I am working on it. I, I, <laughs> I'm I disagree. Hard on it. I thought your coloring looked better on it, but uh, even yesterday when you or Tuesday Monday when you and I were talking about it, we the, the last one made a point. And I was like, wow, I did not know that. Uh-huh. And it caused a good 15 minutes of teaching at our Bible study to say, uh, remember this and yeah. be reminded of that. So cool. uh, <clears throat> the, the liturgical calendar uh, helps us so much because, uh, and I don't really like to just read stuff, but I think for sure. timing and everything, I'm just going to read two little paragraphs. <clears throat> Christianity isn't just lived, it's celebrated. And that's because our faith isn't merely about doctrine. It includes lots of things, saints, historical events, divine mysteries, things that we are uniquely honored throughout the year on feast days. This happens according to a set rhythm called the liturgical calendar. Liturgy is the work of God. That is, it fulfills the duty of praise and worship, which we owe to God as his, crea- as his creatures, The liturgy is the work of divine worship, the offered to God by the church every hour of every day. And the greatest way to do this is with the holy sacrifice of the mass, followed by the divine office or liturgy of the hours, which everyone is invited to participate in that prayer. But you as a deacon required to do that and glad to do that. You know, that's the thing that I think is uh, and it's so easy to participate that. In the uh, liturgy of the hours, if you're uh, using like the uh, an app, there's different apps out there. I u- I happen to use the iBrevery, uh, and they sell books, and <laughs> they're they're kind of hard to follow, but but uh, they're I prefer reading a book, but I usually just can't find the right pages sometimes or quick enough. So, uh, but the app is really good, and especially for a layperson, it's kind of it's just laid out. You don't have to figure a lot of things out. Flipping from page to yeah, page, yeah, yeah. The catechisms are kind of difficult to. <laughs> Yeah, learn how to use that book as well. Yeah, it, but not not as not as hard as Liturgy of the Hours. <laughs> you just need to know the paragraph number in the right. Catechism, and you can go find it. So, uh, just as the Earth revolves around the Sun in a set pattern called the orbit, our Church revolves around the Sun, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, according mm-hmm. to that pattern, which is set out by the liturgical calendar. The liturgical calendar puts the universal Church which has been established all over the world on the same page. And not only 
are we celebrating at a mass, at a town, at a church, in a town? Everything that's being celebrated here is being celebrated up in heaven all at the same time. And <clears throat> like certain here in Brian, we have a devotion to St. Joseph in an Italian kind of way. Uh-huh. Um Another festival would celebrate it in Florence in a different way or another feast day. Right. Uh, but it's all the same. It's the same readings. Absolutely. It's the same uh, St. Patrick's Day in Ireland or Advent in the Pil- Philippines. Those uh, take on a local flair to them. Sure. Judy, I think um, one of the things I think is so interesting and beautiful about the church is um, – Modern society, and maybe it's always been this way, but they always take some good and twist it, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, nowadays, you know, the the term like multiculturalism is a big buzzword term right. and stuff like that. And but the beauty of multiple cultures coming together can be found in its like good best possible way in the church. <laughs> yeah, worldwide. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And like we were talking before the show started, how um, a lot of historical things that are taught, I don't forgot the point you made about uh, St. Crispin. Oh, yeah. Like, so like in um, Shakespeare's Henry V, when Henry's giving his big speech right before the Battle of Agincourt, where the, the British were outnumbered like 20 to 1 and had an overwhelming victory, um, right before the battle, he gives a speech and he says on this, the eve of St. Crispin's day. Hmm. And so, you know, it wasn't even St. Crispin's feast day. It was the eve and they were still, you know, he's marking time time by the feast days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's cool. It is. You know, one of the things about our our church calendar that's in in Easter, going back to Easter, since we just passed through that and we're still in the Easter season, you know, Easter in, in our faith can't be contained in just one day. So we have an octave, right? We have mm-hmm. eight days of Easter, and we're celebrating that through through each day. Now, of course, most people don't celebrate it as they do Easter Sunday, but that's the but the idea is that we should do that. And then it, I'm a little grateful that I, I don't think I can pull that off eight days in a row. <laughs> yeah, we would. My, my back would not handle it. <laughs> <laughs> and we probably gain a little too much weight. Yeah, there too. you go. Hey. But uh, but we do celebrate it in a special way, even if not as much as on Sunday. But then we end it, you know, on Divine Mercy Sunday. And I, I was going to share a little a little story that I had on yeah. Divine Mercy Sunday. So at our parish at St. Mary's Church of the Assumption in West, the first Sunday of every month, we uh, pray the Divine Mercy uh, chaplet at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. And so uh, this particular Sunday, I was it was my turn to, to lead it. And so... We uh, and during that same time we have uh, adoration. So we so the deacon or the priest will expose the Eucharist and the monstrance, and then we'll pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and then we'll do benediction, and that'll be it. So it's you know maybe forty five minutes or so, something like that. Not a real long, long service. And we'll get and especially for the, for Divine Mercy Sunday, we get a pretty good turnout. I imagine we probably had fifty or sixty people oh, there. Oh wow, which that's is awesome. And normally we might have thirty or forty, you know, so a good crowd. But uh, typically. Uh, our, our uh, associate pastor, Father John Boyko, who has recently been transferred, he is, uh, I know it's public now, he's for just a few weeks going to be at Our Lady of Guadalupe in, uh, in Austin, but he's going to be the new pastor in Rockdale. Oh, wow. And so uh, he's, and that's not going to come, come about until mid May. But anyway, Father John typically would do the exposition and I would assist him, and then I would lead the Divine Mercy. And so Father John would always put, put the monstrance up on our high altar near the tabernacle. But uh, in the past, we always would put Jesus on, the, on, on our altar. The main altar. On the main mm-hmm. altar. And so I just thought, well, I'm going to do it that way this time. And uh, so, uh, so I, uh, I did. We ex- exposed the Eucharist in the monstrance. And, and then uh, I went and I kneeled on the step in front of the altar. And there's two steps leading up to the level that the altar is on. So I, I knelt down, and uh, we're praying the Divine Mercy, and uh, I'm I'm just focusing on Jesus and the monstrance just as, as best I can, you know, trying to keep my focus on Him. And that's what He always tells me: just keep your focus on Me, you know, you'll be okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking, you know what? 
I'm wondering if my head is sticking up so much that I'm blocking the view of the people behind me. And so I thought, okay, I'm just going to go down and kneel one step lower. It's about six inches down lower. And so I knelt, I went to that lower step. I looked up, and instead of seeing the Eucharist, I saw a beautiful stained glass image of the Blessed Mother. And I was like, whoa, okay. And then I realized that in the back of our church, in the upper level of our choir loft, is a huge stained glass of the Blessed Mother. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test this next month, but somehow her image was projected perfectly into that small two-inch circle on the monstrance mm-hmm. and completely enveloped the Lord. And I just thought, oh, my gosh, yeah, this is his mother. And she's, she's just uniting herself with him right here, right here, just like she always does as far as, you know, the Blessed Mother always bringing us to her son, right? Right. And so, uh, so I mean, I'm just thinking about the things that had to happen for that to occur. It was like, literally, like a projector was in the choir loft. And, I mean, how long would it take you to, to aim that and, and line <laughs> it, up it up perfectly? Yeah. And so, you know, I'm thinking about, okay, what are the odds of the sun being in the right place? And this six-inch difference in level goes from seeing the Eucharist to only the Blessed Mother. Mm -hmm. Ah, It's so beautiful. And so uh, it really, uh, so I'm calling it my Divine Mercy Miracle. And I'll see next month if if everything lines up or or if, uh, if it was just a, you know, the physics were right, you know, with the levels and the light and the shadows and or if uh, I, I truly had a, a a miracle there, but it was it 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 was just amazing. Well, it was a grace. It was total yeah, grace because yeah. you it could have even just gone undetected by you if you were, you know, reading the yeah chaplet or right. <clears throat> and so so whenever it came time for the elevation, I went and, and I did the elevation and I came back and I was going to incense and so I knelt on the step higher where I was, and. At that point, just Jesus. So I was just like, okay, man, they're, they're so united. And it made me think about the times when how close we can be to encountering the Lord or the Blessed Mother and not even know it. Mm. Because it, I, I literally moved down six inches and she was there, you know, and then I moved six inches up and there Jesus is there. And so how many times in our life are we just, you know, we can't see that spiritual world, as you mentioned, you know, like in Mass, when all the saints and angels are heaven or above the altar during the consecration, and and we're like, eh, I wonder what time the Cowboys start, you know, or, or is so-and-so here today? Well, I'm glad I'm not like <laughs> it's, You know, we're just so oblivious. So when we get those glimpses mm-hmm. like that, man, we need to appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you- uh, you mentioned the Feast of the Divine Mercy, which we just experiences, and uh, we have Pentecost coming up. But uh, a couple of other things about the liturgical calendar. There are some solemnities that are fixed on the calendar because of their date in the regular calendar. Like, yes, okay. Uh, January 1st is the solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God. January 6th is always the Epiphany. Okay. March nineteenth is always Saint Joseph's. Yep. Uh, March we know th- we know that day, right? That's the day we were ordained. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll loan our celebration or unite it with Saint Joseph <laughs> as, uh, every sure. year. Uh, June twenty fourth is the Nativity of Saint John the Baptist. Uh, November first is always All Saints Day. November 9th, Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Mother. December 25th is the Nativity of the Lord. Now we have some movable feasts. Okay. And those all base off of when Easter Sunday is going to be. Yep. We had one recently that had to be moved. <laughs> exactly. And Easter Sunday coordinates, is determined by the spring equinox and the phases of the moon, which is also uh, kind of cool that we just had the solar eclipse. Yeah. And that's the other thing I thought was pretty cool about that little miracle I had is the next day was a solar eclipse. So I thought, you know, if the sun had to be in a certain position, maybe it was affected. Maybe that's the only day it's going to be right there. You never know. We'll We'll check back with you in a couple of weeks. And um, 
So the movable feast that we're talking about is uh, Easter Sunday, which will change when the divine mercy is, and it changes when the ascension of the of the Lord mm-hmm. changes Pentecost, changes Trinity, Corpus Christi, Sacred Heart of Jesus, and Christ the King. Those are movable feasts. Okay. <clears throat> that's all based off Easter. Correct. Yeah. So those dates, days move right. along with that. And then we have uh, Holy Days of Obligation, which were, uh, it's mentioned, but it's really more of a, a suggestion. It, it just seems as though it goes unnoticed a lot, but every Sunday is a Sunday of is a yeah. holy day of obligation. That should be a given, right? Yes, it yeah. does. And so we, we have January the 1st, uh, Solemnity of the Blessed Mother. Thursday of the sixth week of Easter is Ascension, Ascension Thursday, which was long celebrated as a holy day. It's been transferred to the Sunday in most places. Am I right? I think so. In most places. Yes. I think the East, here in the United States, the East area keeps a... <clears throat> celebration of um, Ascension Thursday. August 15th is a holy day where we celebrate the Assumption of the Blessed Mother. Yeah, that's our feast day in West. <clears throat> November 1st, All Saints. December 8th, Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. And Christmas, January 25th. So there's, and a lot of these feast days, like Pentecost, there's novenas that lead up to them that yes. help us. In divine clean. mercy, you mentioned that off the air that you know there's a divine, a divine mercy a novena that really helps you prepare. For, for well, it does, mercy. and a lot of uh, you know there's just so much that we could talk about. But plenary indulgences are involved around a lot of these things, and some of the uh, requirements to gain a plenary indulgence are good things: go to the confession, yeah. receive the Eucharist. Pray for the Pope's intentions. Those are all things that help us in our daily walk. Well, and, you know that goes right into the theme that we want. We were talking about too is continuing our our, our Lenten observances. Those things that draw us closer to the Lord, and mm-hmm. all those things you just mentioned is that's what they do. That's what they do. And there's so many things that we, you know, for example, this this Lent. I don't feel like I last year. I think I had my best Lent ever. This year, so far. Uh, yeah, so far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's hoping I'll find, I'll get to another another yeah, God willing. But uh, but and this year I had a good one too. But I felt like I I didn't really fulfill what I had hoped to do as well. And so what I did last year for the so I have a really hard time fasting because I really like to eat. You know, it's kind of like why do we sin? Because we kind of really I like, like it. it. Yeah. <laughs> And so, and so, and so last year, what I did was we had my wife and I had been doing some intermittent fasting, meaning basically just skipping breakfast, eat, you know, eat at lunch. And so I decided last year I was going to do, a, try to do one meal a day during Lent, and I and it really helped me a lot spiritually because I felt it every day. And mm-hmm. I say, Lord, okay, I know, I'm, but it's getting pretty hard right now. And so I, I got through it, and it, and like I said, it it was something that I knew was there. This year I did the same thing, and uh, but I would say sometimes I would have a little snack, maybe some peanuts or something, you know, just to kind of get me through. Where I I cheated, I, you know, I, I don't know if you say I cheated, but I didn't just have I had a meal a day plus a snack, <laughs> you know, and it would get me to that meal, mm-hmm. and I and I kind of felt bad about that because I because then I, I didn't feel it. <laughs> like I did last year. Mm-hmm. And so those things that we're doing, you know, whether it's, you know, eating better or less or whether it's praying better, uh, living our life better, trying to live a life with less stress, you know, avoiding those things. It may, you know, it might be the TV, social media, uh, news, whatever that draws us away, that distracts us. Because I mean, that's how the enemy, you know, he, he distracts us from the Lord. And, but, but also being aware that, uh, we just need to take baby steps. Yeah, yeah, you know, just I, one, one little step at a time. I think I've, you know, I did a lot of not going to eat this and not going to eat at this time. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, but I challenged myself to focus a little bit more about what was coming out of my mouth and than, than what a good was one. going it and trying to give God the best 
my very best of the time, mm -hmm. and that's um, I was with that a friend. That may be harder than <laughs> than one meal with, a day. <laughs> uh, a friend, and she said, "You know, I try very hard. As soon as my eyes open, to make the sign of the cross, and it's like you're giving God that first shot of all your thoughts." Yeah. And uh, First so thing of the day. you know, kind of been thinking about that, doing that as much as possible. Uh, you also mentioned earlier that you wanted to talk about uh, the anniversary of the explosion in your hometown in yep. West. Yep. So today is the 11 year anniversary of the uh, fertilizer plant explosion in West, and uh, it, it reminded me when I was in in mass this morning as our our first reading from Acts. The first sentence says, There broke out a severe persecution of the church in Jerusalem, and all were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And it reminded me of what I mentioned earlier of, you know, how do we react when in persecution or tragedy like the explosion? Uh, and there were so many forms of tragedy in that because, uh, you know, some people lost their homes, some People lost their lives. Some people lost family members. I lost several folks that I went to high school with and others that were injured severely but recovered. Uh, businesses, you know, they're just it was just devastation. And and to uh and to, we need to, you know, realize that while many have recovered and things look good, we need to continue to pray for those. And I'll just ask all our listeners to mm -hmm. pray for all those in West who suffered from the uh, fertilizer plant explosion because I, I'm not a big one on on uh, using the word PTSD, but in, stuff like, in situations like that, it exists. Oh, dude. And people are still hurting, <laughs> uh, and it affects not just uh, uh, the community the uh, in our secular type stuff, in our interactions, but in our, in our churches too because it seems like our uh, <laughs> tolerance – for things is less many times. And also, though, I think like here locally, the uh, anniversary of bonfire collapsing is yes. you know pretty poignant. And, you know, 9-11 and things like that. But it, it's also a time that great unity came about. I mean, when that happened, our uh, middle school was planning on going on retreat. And I, I just had this how can we go away on retreat mm -hmm. and accomplish something when these people are uh, suffering so much? So we, our retreat was coming to West and wow. help do some cleanup and provided a meal That's awesome. for people at the KC. And it really, I mean, so many times in youth ministry, I thought I was doing things for the kids, but it really <laughs> <laughs> turned out to be uh, doing something for me. Well, the outpouring uh, from the whole state of Texas and the nation to West was incredible. I remember I had my store uh, blessings at the time up on I-35 uh, just before you get to check stop there. Mm -hmm. And it was on a Saturday after the explosion, and I was on the West School Board at the time, so I was really involved in trying to get our kids back in school. And, and, I'm, and I'm looking out the window, and all of a sudden all these school buses started coming by. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? It was like 20 buses in a row, and they're all from the Spring ISD. Well, all of our buses were disabled. Oh, because of the the percussion blew the windows out, and so the buses we couldn't use the buses, and so they loaned us a, at least twenty buses. Wow! I mean, until the end of school, and then the Conley ISD, which is just a little bit south of us, maybe ten miles, they had a school that they had mothballed. Which I mean, what's the what's the odds of having a mothballed school mm -hmm. these days? And the explosion from the day the explosion happened until the next Monday. They took that school, repainted it in our school colors and their arrival, and then welcomed all of our kids uh, from K through 12 into this building wow. uh, on Monday. So we missed three days of school after a tragedy where all of our schools were blown up. Mm. So, uh, yeah, you can't even uh, imagine or give enough thanks to folks like yourself mm -hmm. And all those others that came down to uh, to help us, but uh, but please keep everyone still in your prayers. Uh, you know things have really coming together. I mean they've uh, there's a, a lot of great things have happened, rebuilding projects and stuff like that. But but uh, there there's still wounds, physical, mental, and spiritual wounds in the community, 
uh, from from a tragedy like that. And let's just pray that uh, the good Lord will heal them and that more and more people will say, okay, Lord, I can't do it. And I'm just going to surrender myself to you, you know, body, mind, and soul. Yes. Just guide me. Please so, do. Thank you for reminding yeah. me to, just to speak yeah, on that. I wanted to talk about that. So um, <clears throat> we still have a couple of weeks of the Easter season, but it's yep. going to come to a pinnacle when we have the celebration of Pentecost. Right. I was going to mention something real quickly, uh, you know, cause just because uh, 10 days before that, uh, you have the Ascension. Right. And I was thinking about that this morning is that, you know, how incredible is that, that, you know, the Lord was resurrected from the dead and then walked the earth for 40 days and encountered the apostles and some of the disciples, you know, he had, he encounters Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, you know, the next morning, and then the the uh, two disciples on the road to Emmaus, and then in the upper room twice. You know, Thomas you know, wouldn't accept. <laughs> I want to. I don't believe you guys. You know, and then he comes. Jesus comes back. Okay, Thomas, here I am. You know, believe, see, check this out. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> yeah, see and believe. Um, Ate that, some fish. Yeah, isn't that incredible? That and then. You know, you come to the Ascension, and they're like, no, 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 Lord, don't leave us. <laughs> and then he says, hey, if I do not leave, it's better that I, it's better that I leave, you know, or the Holy Spirit will not come. And you think about how could it ever be better that the Lord leave? But, you know, that's why we're, we're blessed with, that tri- with the triune God, and he knows, and Jesus knows that this is his role, and then the Holy Spirit, his equal, has a role as well. And even the scriptures tell us we can't, no one can say Jesus is Lord except through the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. So thank you, Jesus, for ascending to heaven right. and ascending to the Holy and Spirit. the life of the church, many, um, you know, people come into the church on the Easter Vigil. Yep. We have confirmations going on left and right all over these dioceses, and we're focusing on the uh, coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And just a quick little Search this morning trying to get my ducks in a row pointed out that it's prophesied in the book of Isaiah. And I was like, God, I wonder if I knew that. But I must have known it at one time because it was already marked in my mind. Okay. (laughs) So that's a good thing. But in uh, Isaiah 11, it starts off. uh, uh, Sorry. Chapter 11, verse 2. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and strength, a spirit of knowledge and a fear of the Lord. Mm. And his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. And I think that um, we sure spend a lot of time teaching this to our confirmation students. And then we get this feast of Pentecost and I don't know, you just can't be reminded enough. Number one, it's a gift. Absolutely. And when someone gives you a gift, you don't say, okay, thank you, and then you go put it on the shelf in a closet. You have to open the gift. Exactly. And, you know, the other thing, Judy, that we often forget is that, you know, you have to accept the gift because you can refuse it. You know, you could take it and, like you said, put it aside in the closet and never open it, or you can just say, no, I don't want it, or re-gift it and give it to somebody else. Right. Well, you know? and— as uh, we receive the gift at our baptism, we receive it, and it's uh, strengthened at our confirmation, and which is a um, another reason as to why we baptize babies. So we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit so young in our life that we can cooperate with those gifts. Absolutely, because you know uh, the sacrament of confirmation it completes our baptismal baptismal promises and just like baptism we re- we receive another mark on our soul a permanent indelible mark that can never be removed and you know i think uh, I th- have you taught you've 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 taught confirmation before i mm-hmm. believe and i have too and I, i've i've made the mistake before when i really was not as knowledgeable not that i'm that knowledgeable now but of really kind of presenting it as almost like becoming an adult in the church. And Our graduation. How wrong is that? Our yeah. graduation. It's so wrong. You know, it's, it, it has nothing to do with that. You know, we're receiving that gift that you well, talked about. Well, but we're again. trying to, we're trying to yeah, grab at something that they already know, like yeah. the Trinity. Everything we try to do to teach the Trinity is her- heretical. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. We're, 
But but you know, it, it's it's receiving that gift of the Holy Spirit, and from that time forward, whether we, of course, we don't we don't see the spiritual world, so we don't see that Holy Spirit descending upon us at confirmation. But the thing is, is it doesn't matter whether we understand it, whether we believe it. I mean, we don't even have to believe it. You're, you're receiving it. You you may not accept the gift if you don't believe it, but you ha- you will have received the Holy Spirit, and you have everything you need to go out and spread the gospel. It's it's all inside you, whether you know it or not. Right. So so we, as Jesus always tells us over and over, don't be afraid. Mm-hmm. You know, many many more, and we uh, like you say we can utilize those gifts if we choose to. And because there, uh, we receive it at baptism and are strengthened at confirmation so that we can go out and proclaim the truths of the faith. Absolutely. I mean, once we have that, we can go out and proclaim those truths, you know, with confidence. Mm-hmm. We, you know, we, but it, it's it's not a, it doesn't mean it's that we don't have to get out of our comfort zone because there's a lot of things that we both do that, uh, you know, like in formation, uh, we did a lot of street evangelization. I can tell you what, that's out of my comfort zone. But I got so many beautiful benefits from that, you know, so many blessings that, uh, you know, I, I don't, I can, still can't say that it's something that I'm going to pick and choose to go do. Mm-hmm. But I, I know that there's times when uh, that's something the Lord's calling me to do. I know here in uh, Ryan Call Station area, uh, y- y'all have been doing some door-to-door evangelization. That's we another have done thing. That. Yeah, and they actually uh, Keith did that on Holy Thursday, and they went to downtown Bryan, excuse me, where he uh, encountered uh, more homeless people than we really. It's not like in Austin where there's this you know block after block after block right. of here. Uh, but more than you expected. But I I think that um, that experience prepares you for that ride in the elevator or, as I say, my H-E-B produce evangelization because <laughs> it just seems like sometimes it happens where you'll catch someone's eye that maybe looks sad or, you know, be able to just say, hey, hope you're having a good day. Right. Those kind of things. Uh, Robin, I knew this time was going to fly past. We have about four minutes. Oh, and gosh. I know, <laughs> I know we want to talk Me about— Me and Judy could talk all day long, I think. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, May being the month of the Blessed Mother yes. and our our celebrations that go along with that, and part of I don't know if you can include a little bit of your conversion well, story with that. I, I can tell you something that, that happened to me in May, Mother's Day, mm. 2016. So, uh, as you know, Judy, you probably remember we had to ha- if we were going to if you wanted to apply for the uh, diaconate class of 2022, you had to have your application in by June 1st of the 2016. Oh, I remember cause now. I'm sure that Keith had been preparing for months and months and months, <laughs> but I, I didn't uh, make a decision, and it was May already. And it so for those of you guys that are considering uh, applying, start early <laughs> because it's a lot. I mean, it's probably, I'm going to say, if you're just doing a little bit of time, three months' work. Easily. Yeah. So So it's May. It's Mother's Day. I haven't done anything yet. And... I'm kind of in that space between awake and sleep. And I had this dream, vision, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. I think I've told you this before. And so the Blessed Mother is standing next to my mother. My mother had passed away five or six years earlier. Her name was Marilyn. And the Blessed Mother turns to my mother and says, Marilyn, will you talk to him? He's not listening to me. <laughs> And uh, I just woke up immediately. <laughs> and Marilyn said, that's been my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and first, you know, in the moment, I didn't think about it. But later, I thought about the wedding at Cana. Mm. You know, we're, and that's how we know that, that Mary is our intercessor, that she, hey, uh, you know, Judy's uh, 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 having a little problem right now. Will you, uh, uh, son, uh, she, she's been calling. Will you, you know, take mm-hmm. care of her? And so anyway, I had this, this vision and I uh, and I set up immediately, and I woke Carolyn up, and I said, Carolyn, I guess I'm going to have to turn in that application for diaconate formation. She said, well, why are you saying that right now? You didn't even tell me Happy Mother's Day yet. <laughs> and I, I, I said, because uh, uh, the Blessed Mother and Mom just told me so. 
And so that's the <laughs> truth. You yeah. know, I still was unsure until after that time. Mm-hmm. Boom. I'm I'm getting after yeah. it. And so the, when that and again, if any of you guys and wives are considering the diaconate formation, when they say a deadline, they mean it. Yeah. <laughs> We had to drive to Austin just to turn it in on the right day. <laughs> okay, so you were late. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so um, we are coming up to uh, the month of May. The church celebrates our Blessed Mother yes. in a lot of different ways. We used to have a crowning in May. We still do. Uh, oh. We still do. That. So we, we have about one minute left. I see that you have a lot of markings there. Is there something that you'd like to close the show out with or perhaps a... Well, uh, I do have one thing. So I'll say one thing, and then I'll close with with a little prayer. So in the gospel today, Jesus said something, and you know how we read the gospels or read all the scriptures, and we come up with things that we don't remember. Mm -hmm. So Jesus said this, I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And that led me to say, what about me? Jesus came to do the Father's will. Not his own. Mm -hmm. Am I seeking to do my will or God's will? That's something I think we can reflect on. I think so, too. So let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we ask that you send your blessings out upon all those listening today. Please be with them. Please protect them and their families and all that they do. Please help us this day to continually always do your will. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Why did God bless you? The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mother Mary, pray Pray for for us. us.